Yahoo! Japan is an incredible country, and I know I'm not the only one who thinks so. I could make a never ending list of things that I love about it, and I know I've already given you the five things the UK should steal from Japan, but to be honest, five things just wasn't enough. So I'm back here again to give you ten more. <laughs> so let's go! Ikimashou! Let's go! Ikimashou! <laughs> So number one is no tipping. This may be controversial to say, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about tipping. I think there's a lot of different views on that. After re-evaluating and, and reading a lot of the comments that I've received on some of my previous videos, I kind of understand a little bit more why there's no tipping in Japan now and maybe maybe it's like that in other countries I'm not too sure where Japan is concerned I kind of like the idea of no tipping if that was a thing in the UK because to me as a waitress in the UK or in England sometimes it does feel a bit like you're asking for charity money please oh no no there's no money from people to give you a tip it's kind of annoying having to ask people to receive it if we were paid enough as it is and we didn't need to ask people for it i think that would be a lot better a lot less awkward i think a lot of the time people feel really awkward in customer service in particular just putting it on the bill automatically or not and if people don't want to give a tip that is also equally as awkward and to think that that wouldn't be a thing to think it would be similar to japan where there's no tipping whatsoever you just get paid enough as it is for the service that you do and people understand that you're giving a good service not just for the tip for the service because that's one of my biggest worries in my job anyway at least if i do receive a tip from them i always think people are thinking that i expect it from them or that i'm just giving good service to receive that extra tip Give me money, give me money, give me money, give me money. Which is not the case. I think my views on this have slightly changed a little bit. Let me know what you think to this. But yeah, I just think it would be a lot less awkward if that wasn't the case. Number two, Japanese ramen. So in England, we have miso ramen, shoyu ramen, soy sauce base. We have lots of different different toppings like chashu. We have teriyaki ramen, beef, tempura. We have kimchi, tonkatsu, udon noodles. We don't have much soba, soba noodles, I must say. But we have a lot of choice, right? We have a decent amount of variety to say it's not Japan, but we have different varieties of ramen to choose from, which I really appreciate and really enjoy. But at the same time, it's never as good as Japan. It just isn't. It's completely different. I think for me, I just love a simple ramen. Like I know th the, the making of ramen is the opposite of simple, right? Like there's a lot of hours that go into that, a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of skill. But at the same time, where toppings are concerned, I kind of appreciate just having the char shoe, the menma, which is, I didn't know that was what it's called actually, bamboo shoots. They're my favorite thing. I gotta say, I love bamboo shoots. Tell me if I'm saying this wrong. Kamaboko, kamaboko. So that's the surimi, the processed seafood. I think it's in like a little pattern. It looks really cute and kawaii, like, like it's from anime or something. And um, I love that as well. We don't often, I don't often see that in ramen in, in Nottingham at least or in England. I've, I don't think I've ever seen that. And tamago, the egg. Now this is like the biggest difference, I would say. I think the broth itself is very different in, in the UK. Like not a lot of places get it right. A lot of times it seems kind of watered down. There's not as much flavor. Like in Japan, there's so many different varieties, obviously, but like the thick ramen that you get, the creaminess of it with the grilled chashu on top, it is just, Chef kiss. It's just oishi, <laughs> oishi desu. It's just so amazing and delicious. But here it's like not the same, or for me at least in my experience, it's never been the same. And the egg, that is the biggest difference I would say. If I see a ramen with an overcooked egg here, it's just a flat out no. I don't even want to try the ramen if I'm honest. That is the biggest indicator for me that it's not a good traditional Japanese ramen. The, the gooey, yolky, like almost jammy textures. For some reason, maybe you can tell me why this is, but I know the egg is like marinated, marinated in soy maybe. It has like a nice, nice color to it on the outside. But maybe you can tell me why the inside is so sweet. It's like so different to our eggs in the UK. I don't know if it is to do with the eggs or if it's the way we're cooking them. Like, please clarify that in the comments, but it's just not the same here. It's just not the same. On the food again, because I'm a big foodie, right? Well, I'm not gonna apologize to you for that. Traditional Japanese breakfast. So obviously I've talked about Japanese food in general on this channel, that how much I adore it. Like I love most Japanese food. There's a lot less sugar. There's like nice balance of flavors. There's a nice variety. It's very healthy um, in comparison to the UK, for example. But one thing I haven't really elaborated on is just how much I enjoy a traditional Japanese breakfast, like the one you would get in a ryokan. The variety that you get 
in just a breakfast meal is just astounding to me. Like in the UK, I feel like we've grown up with, well, there's two different things. Like there's one point of view that's breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Like don't go without it. Then we're encouraged to have like breakfast cereal that comes in a box that's ultra processed and it's made out to be something like really healthy and as far as I'm concerned it's not that healthy. Or there's the don't eat breakfast, skip it, like you'll be so much better without it, you need to fast. Like there's those two different perspectives. But when you compare that to Japanese, like the traditional Japanese breakfast, there's such variety. It's like an entire meal. You get like natto, the fermented soybeans, they are soybeans right? You get the fish, like grilled salmon, it looks amazing. You get a bowl of rice, which I feel like we will never have for breakfast over here, unless it was like a rice pudding or something, I don't know. Get the vegetables, like tsukemono. I love tsukemono so much. I think they're so underrated to say they're just pickled vegetables, but I could eat them all day long. <laughs> Probably shouldn't. <laughs> but just the sheer variety and the balance and the healthiness and the heartiness of that meal, I think that's so cool. And I love the way it's served as well. You have like a tray with like little ding, 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 little bits that you put each little bit of food on. Like the portions are really well thought out. That's another thing that I love about Japanese food in general anyway, portion size. Again, I'm going to reiterate that. UK, you need to learn about it. So yeah, I would definitely say Japanese breakfast. Definitely look into that or try it yourself if you, if you haven't. And if you are from Japan, you were brought up with a Japanese breakfast. Tell me, is it similar to a breakfast that you'll get in a ryokan? What kind of breakfast do you have in the morning? I've heard of quite a few Japanese people have toast for breakfast. I don't know if that's more of a recent thing or is it not? Let me know what you have for breakfast and, and what you think to other cultures breakfast because it's so different to yours I'm assuming. There's also a channel that I'd really like to recommend like one I've been watching on and off. Miwa's Japanese cooking. So when I see her channel I get so envious and so jealous of the food that she cooks. It looks so delicious and I, I wish that she would cook for me. <laughs> Can I just take her home please? That food it just looks so beautiful and so healthy and I just love that there's more access to seeing how to cook proper Japanese food. I would love to try it actually myself. I'd love to try and, and recreate a Japanese meal if I could with Japanese ingredients. And also Japanese people have such healthy, clear, beautiful, youthful looking skin. I consider myself quite lucky in that regard. Like genetically, I think I've struck gold on the youthful gene. <laughs> I look younger than, than my age, but Japanese people look so youthful and so beautiful. And I think a lot of that comes down to genes, obviously, but a lot of it does come down to diet, I would say, diet and exercise. I would love to introduce a, a good Japanese breakfast into my my routine, my, my lifestyle. Number four, evening baths. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm definitely not a bath person. I barely ever have them, actually. I am I always have showers because I grew up thinking it, it wastes a lot of water. <laughs> It takes a long time to set up, like you have to wait a long time to fill the bath. Um, then there's cleaning the bath, all the dirt and things from your body. It's such an ordeal to clean it all the time. But I'd rather just not bother with it. I just, I was just brought up having showers. I don't know. I, I don't know why. Plus like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I just don't want to see it all. I just want to be sat there looking at myself. Like I'm just, I don't have that much body confidence. I gotta say, maybe I have that uh, in common with Japanese women. I don't know. Let me know if if you're super body confident. You should be because a lot of Japanese women are beautiful. No matter what size you are, they're just beautiful anyway. But for me personally, I don't know. I just don't enjoy them. They just seem a bit too. What's the word? Like luxurious. Like, I'm not worthy of that luxury to sit down and just have the candles and the everything and it's just not me. Plus, a lot of the reason is the baths in England are just not as good as Japan. Japan's baths I've noticed are really really deep and really really comfy. Now I'm a very small person so this might also be a big reason I don't enjoy baths. I just... <laughs> I just slink down. My feet probably don't even touch the end of the bath. It's not very comfortable for me. I don't know if that's just me. Maybe that's a small people's problem. But in Japan, they're nice and deep and you can sit upright in them. And the water is just beautiful in Japan, like especially onsens, like wow. That was the first time that I have truly enjoyed a bath or a bathing experience. <laughs> Experiencing the different onsen rooms in the Ryokan that we stayed in, in Urashima, like it was so incredible. And that totally, totally changed my perspective on, on baths. Plus I've heard there's a lot of benefits to, to having evening baths. I'm not sure if the benefit is in having it in the evening, but I can just imagine it'd be really relaxing and really nice to have an evening bath. And it's something that I really want to introduce into my own lifestyle. 
I have two cold showers a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. It's supposedly meant to, to bring about a lot of benefits and things and it, it elevates my mood. But having an evening bath could be really like super relaxing and nice and I, I think I'd love to incorporate that into my own life. But I also have a question or maybe a debate for you all. Are you supposed to shower before you have a bath or after? Because this is a big debate, like people have strong opinions about this. I can't comment. I don't have a strong opinion on this because I take showers, cold showers. In the UK I noticed that the way I was brought up, we would have the bath and then the shower. Because you have the bath, all the dirt and the grime comes off you in the bath and then you which is not very nice to sit in it. That's also why I wasn't really a fan of bath sitting in your own dirt. I didn't really understand how that was enjoyable. All the dirt and ground comes off you and then you wash it off with the shower. So you wouldn't shower before. But in Japan, you do shower before. And I've noticed obviously in onsens, I don't know, I'm assuming it is like that in the Japanese home too, that you would shower before. Let me know if that's true. I told this to Lucas. He just got so confused. He didn't understand it. He said, after you've had the bath, you'd be sweating in the bath because of the heat, the dirt coming off you, why wouldn't you shower after it? But I'm I'm in two minds. I don't really understand the difference. Like, what do you think? Settle this argument once and for all. Number five, Shinkansen, bullet train. So Shinkansens are incredible, right? They're iconic to Japan. Super, super fast. They look amazing. They're really efficient. The top speed for a Shinkansen is up to 320 kilometers per hour. And to travel from Tokyo to Osaka, it will take you about two and a half, maybe three hours tops. That's pretty good, right? We don't have anything like that in the UK here. Apparently they're really eco-friendly. They only consume 12.5% of the energy planes require and they produce about 92% less carbon emissions per seat. So that's a big difference. They also have inbuilt earthquake safe features as far as I'm aware like I had no idea about that something to do with lithium ion batteries which was developed in 2019 because of that they can run on an independent power source so again they're pretty impressive in the UK we have trains and trams tomato tomato they're, they're like distant relatives Shinkans are cheaters the trams are just a mere domesticated house cat <laughs> it's just not the same they're not as fast and they're not as efficient and not as clean and, and like they're just incredible number six is street food so in the UK we have street food it's it's pretty good. We have indoor street food, which is like, why? <laughs> it's kind of weird, right, to have street food but inside. So we have like a shopping center where you go upstairs and there's a whole like, it's like a small food court looking sort of situation where you have different street foods, different like ramens and things like that and buns and maybe like independent food companies have it there. I'm not too sure. I've not really been that, that much. It's not outside, but it's nice. And we have like different markets and stores that come along, that come and go. Mostly around Christmas time we have markets. I guess that's our version of street food, if, I, if I'm honest. I'm guessing it's in Asia in general, but in Japan we experienced Skiji Market, Nishiki Market. Nishiki was my absolute favorite. So if I could steal away Nishiki Market and take it for my, take it for my own, <laughs> I would totally, let's grab it and go. Because <laughs> it was just incredible, like all the choice, all the fresh food that's out in front of you. The service was incredible, like, and it's so clean, obviously, because you stand there at the stall and you eat it and then you drop it in the bin and that's that's it. You're not littering anywhere. The tamagoyaki roll was incredible. I love crab meat. We don't get much crab meat over here. We really don't. Like, it's a high price to pay if you want any crab meat or seafood in general. It's a lot cheaper in Japan. The quality, obviously, is just that much better because they're near the sea. Recently, I've been wondering, why do we not have as much street food as Japan like they have so much and it's so good like such good quality I think maybe part I could be wrong about this but it could be due to the weather <laughs> like who's gonna stand out in British weather and have street food right cook in the rain this is the best time to do it like we'd rather be inside it's always raining and it's always windy in fact if we had a lot of street food like the tents would like blow away <laughs> Yeah, it's just not as enjoyable, I think. We have picnics and things, and that idea to me is so romantic and so sweet, but it's just not very practical where we live. A lot of the time, our weather is kind of poo-poo. <laughs> kind of poo-poo and it's just not worth it we just end up being indoors it's a lot nicer in fact when it is sunny here like we jump me and lucas we jump at the chance to be outside in a cafe outside drinking a little cup of tea cup of coffee like we love it we don't get sun very often so think you self lucky japan if fish markets in general i would love to steal number seven ryokans so this is pretty obvious right like why wouldn't you steal ryokans from japan it's in they're amazing they're like the best thing I can't say the best thing that Japan has because Japan has a lot of good things, but one of the best things that Japan has. I know we have hotels in the UK, but they're just not the same. The service that you get, 
in Ryokan's like the kaiseki meal that they set up and the yukata that you get to wear they're so beautiful and they're like little do songs and the onsens the onsens are so nice if you go to japan you need to try an onsen like it's just a must you can't go to japan without trying that or ryokan they both they go hand in hand okay so obviously i would love to steal ryokans for the uk i don't think i'm the only one who thinks that right our most successful video to date is about going to Ryokan. And there's a good reason why, it's because it's freaking awesome. I love watching videos about Ryokans, like I'm pretty obsessed at this point and I really, really wanna try more Ryokans in Japan when we go next time. So if you have any recommendations, let us know and we'll see if we can pay them a visit. Number eight, customer service. Japan is pretty well known for its excellent service. They're so attentive. I think that's the thing I love the most. Something that I really missed coming back to the UK. We have good service here and there, like don't get me wrong, we're not terrible. Like. We we have certain service steps we need to follow like me working in customer service i know that for a fact that there are certain things required to give the customers the best service we can like we have a phrase in england that customer is always right which basically insinuates that we do our very best to please them because their opinion matters right in in japan i've heard that it's kind of similar customer is god they sound kind of, kind of similar funnily enough so i think we both do value customer service but in japan it's just i miss that sort of attentiveness that you get they go above and beyond of what's required i think that's the difference they do really care about giving the best service that they possibly can and that is essential to them from the smallest things down to like if you're in a combini and they ask you do you need chopsticks would you like me to warm this up do you need a bag all these different little steps matter to me as a customer and i think it matters to everyone else it's all part of the service and it makes it that much better it makes me like yearn to be back in Japan, the amount of care that goes into it. I really, really respect that. On a similar note, number nine, kombinis. So kombinis, Family Mart, Lawson, 7-Eleven, like we could spend all day long in there and not get bored. <laughs> like Don Quixote, right? Just stay in there forever. And I would definitely, definitely steal a kombini for the UK. One thing, that you might not have realized is that they always have toilets in and in the uk it's like well i don't know if this is just england actually from where i am it's really difficult to find toilets anywhere in public that is something i really struggle with because i always always need the toilet when i went to japan they always had a toilet in the kombini i was so so relieved <laughs> literally and the food choices are incredible high quality meal in a kombini like don't get me wrong we have supermarkets we have like meal deals and things we have hot food sections in the supermarkets you can get pastries sausage rolls and hot pizzas outside actually yeah we do have like a store where we have hot pizzas but i never go to it for some reason but kombinis just have it all they combine everything and it's just so easy and so so cheap and i would definitely steal that i think i'm not the only one in that there's so many videos covering it that it must be popular like really Really popular it's not just me right number 10 finally low crime rate this is possibly the biggest thing for me that i would steal for the uk this is like my biggest dream to feel safe wherever you go like walking alone at night would be the best thing ever it's so simple right but as a woman as a young woman in the uk i feel like that is something that is kind of hard, kind of difficult to do without worry, like you're always on alert. I just can't go out running or walking at night on my own. It's just not in the cards, it's not possible. In Japan, I've heard that it's quite safe at night actually. So Japan has one of the lowest homicide rates, recording 0.3 homicides per 100,000 people. It's apparently the 10th safest country in the world. This is according to 2022, bear in mind. Japan has also been in the top 10 countries in the Global Peace Index for 14 years, consistently receiving high marks for its low crime rates, minimal internal conflict, and virtually non-existent political unrest. These are all great things, right? Like why wouldn't you wanna steal that way? <laughs> actually, stealing sounds kind of crime related maybe politely take <laughs> iceland has been the safest country for 14 years in a row according to the global peace index which i had no idea about i didn't know iceland was so safe i think that's great i think it's great to be in a country where you feel safe and you feel comfortable it's something that a lot of people probably take for granted if you do live in a country like that coming to another country you might realize that how difficult it can be and how much it actually affects your life and your your mental state and your happiness and i think it shows because the nordic countries of europe norway sweden Denmark, Iceland and Finland, most of them also being among the top 10 happiest nations worldwide. So it clearly does have an effect on your happiness. I can imagine living in Japan would 
make me a lot happier. Feeling that sort of safety and security and that, that trust in the government to take action on things, they take action on crime, they, they treat it seriously. And apparently common attributes of the world's safest countries include high levels of wealth, social welfare, education, effective criminal justice system, and positive government citizen relationships. So these are all things to consider. But apparently both Europe and Asia have the world's lowest homicide rates of three or fewer per 100,000 inhabitants, which it's kind of interesting actually, but according to this, Japan is a lot safer than the UK, which I, I do, I am kind of envious about. But how do you feel in Japan? Do you walk alone at night? Like, is that normal for you? I'm really curious to see how different our lives are and how different we feel about crime in our countries. Does it have a great effect on your life and your happiness? Let me know in the comments below. So there you go. There's 10 things I'd hypothetically steal from Japan. What about you? What would you take from Japan if you could? What would you steal away? Or maybe you're from Japan. Maybe there's something you enjoy from other countries that you'd like to take away like let me know in the comments below if you haven't already check out our latest video 10 things all foreigners find surprising about japan there's definitely a few surprising ones on the list please like and subscribe to see more videos like this if you liked it bye bye